Hey, this is Ish, and in this video, I'm going to explain what keyframes are and show you five different ways you can use keyframes to improve your videos. If you're new to Premiere Elements, though, in the top right corner, I will link to another video I did on Adobe Premiere Elements called Getting Started. That video, about 30 minutes long, is where I cover all the basics that I wish someone would have shared with me when I was getting started. Now, let's jump into what are keyframes. Well, keyframes change a property, for example, position or scale over time. Adobe explains to create a change over time, you need at least two keyframes. One keyframe at the beginning of the change and another keyframe at the end of the change. Once those two keyframes are set, the Premiere Elements creates a gradual change between the two keyframes. Don't worry, after I go through a couple of examples, it should make more sense. I'm in Adobe Premiere Elements Expert Mode. To get to keyframes in Premiere Elements, select Applied Effects. Then you want to select show, hide, keyframes, controls, which is this icon located right here. And then when you select it, it's going to open up. And what you can see is that this actually mimics the timeline down in the corner. I'm going to use a diamond to show an example on how you can use keyframes. Because with keyframes, it can be applied to video clips or to an image that you bring in. The main thing to grasp is how keyframes work. And with that knowledge, you can apply it to your video creations. One of the things I wanna show you with the keyframes first is there's this icon right here, and this is the toggle animation. So if you select this icon, what'll happen is it'll apply these diamonds down here. And what you can see is all these little clock icons, toggle animation have come on. So these are all the different options anywhere you see in this applied effects that allows you to have a keyframe that you can change over time. So there's the keyframe that you can use for position, there's keyframe for scale, rotation. Then if you go down here, there's also a keyframe for opacity. Keyframes that I'm going to explain in this video is one, how to adjust the clip position, how to do the scale of a keyframe, how to do rotation, how to do opacity, and then I'm going to also do an effect over time. So those are the five keyframes that I plan to walk through and show you. This icon here is actually the keyframe in the beginning. First one I'm going to start out with and show you its position. So I have this keyframe, this is the initial starting position right here. So with position, this keyframe right here, this is setting the start position. So this keyframe, marks this location at the start. So say now I wanted to move this keyframe. I want at the end. So as you can see here, as I'm moving the timeline marker, it's moving down here. So say if I want at the end, I want this diamond to be off the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this diamond and there's two ways you can adjust the position. You can adjust it here or you can actually adjust it in the view window. So I'm gonna take this diamond and I'm gonna actually drag it across the stream because I want it off. This is the start position and then this is the end position. So what you're gonna, this is what you're gonna go and see happen. I'm gonna press play. So now as you can see, the position is changing over time. Like I said, Adobe explains that a keyframe is to change over time and you need at least two keyframes. So we have the least two keyframes and it's changing that position over time. Play it again. Now, what if this is too slow? So what you can do is if this is too slow, is I can actually bring these keyframes closer together. So to see how the speed increased for that, let me play it again. That's what the keyframe allows you to do. It allows you to change the position over time. Now say I wanted to bring it back onto the screen. I want to go off and back on. So let me show you another example. Let me drop another keyframe. So right now it's off screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to change the position again. And I'm going to bring it, say, right back to the middle. So what you can see is again, right here it add another keyframe because again i changed the position now i have three keyframes so watch what happens it's going to go off screen then it came right back so it went off screen and it came right back so that is what the keyframe allows you to do it allows you to change the position and it also allows you to control the speed based off of how far the keyframes are now i want to go and show you this little window right here. Say you wanted to jump from one keyframe to another. If you click this icon here, it takes you to one, the next keyframe. If you click that 
Con again, it takes you to another keyframe. Now this one in the middle is to add or remove a keyframe. So say you didn't want to go here and select clear. What you can do instead is you can go from one keyframe to the next and then you can select that. That's to remove the keyframe or to add a keyframe. So those arrows allow you to go from one keyframe to another. That's how you would change the position over time. Now I want to show how you could change the scale over time. So now we're going to look at the scale. So the scale, this is the scale right now of this keyframe. So this is the starting position. You can change the scale either by going here or by changing the window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set the scale to zero. So the scale right now is zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change this over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set the scale to be 150. Watch what's going to happen. The scale changed over time. Again, you need two keyframes. So we got one in the beginning and one in the end. And it's going to change the scale over time. So again, so what if you say you want this to be faster? Then you could just move this keyframe closer. Now watch how fast it gets to 150. And if you look right here, you can actually see the number grow and you can see the scale as it's growing from one zero to 150, that's the scale changing over time. So that's how you can adjust the scale over time. Let me just add another keyframe to put an F to the say I wanted to go here. Say I wanted to go from zero to 150, and then let's say I wanted to go to 100. As you can see, it already put the keyframe there, a new one for me. So watch this number as I go from zero to 150 to 100. So see it's there and it came right back down. And if this is too fast, then what you can do is you can drag this out. You can drag that further out in the timeline and space it according to kind of what speed you want to go to. In the timeline, you can actually see where your keyframes are. So I'm going to change this from opacity and I'm going to change it to scale. So as you can see in the window here, you can actually see the keyframes located, the small little diamonds located right here. I'm going to expand the window. But you can actually see the small little diamonds here in the window and actually take a look at the keyframes. All right, so we talked about position, scale. So what else can you do with keyframes is you can look at the rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the rotation over time. Again, they define a keyframe as having at least one keyframe at the beginning and one keyframe at the end, two keyframes in order to be able to do a change. We're going to do rotation. So we have it here. So our rotation is going to be zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to, let's go, let's go right about here. So it's in the window. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the rotation. We're going to go all the way here. So again, it's starting at this neutral position and then it's going to get to this position. So watch, you can watch this number. You can see it in a window. You can see it here as it changes over time. Diamond is now rotating. So that's another way you can use keyframes to rotate an object, an image or video and bring it in again to go to the next keyframe right there to go to beginning. So if I want to clear this keyframe, boom, remove it. So the next one I want to look at, and again, all these where you have the toggle animation on, these can all keyframes can all be applied. But the one that I want to look at right now is opacity. So now we're in opacity. So what I'm going to do here that way you can see it both ways. I'm actually going to change this to opacity. And then I'm going to set the starting position as 100%. I'm going to drop a keyframe right there. You can actually see the keyframe right there in the timeline. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll down here. And I'm going to set the keyframe to be zero. So you can see, see the difference here with the opacity. See how it's here and then basically fading down. So if I hit play. You can see it changing over time there. You can see it also going down the, the line fading on a linear path going downwards. So that is another way to be able to change and use keyframes over time. We have our starting position here. 
and then we have our end position there and you can see it changing right here on the screen you can see it changing the panel and then you also have it changing right there over time for that keyframe for opacity all right so now we're going to do an effect Adobe has different effects that are available that you can change over time and have parameters that you can toggle on and off animation. So the one we're going to use is actually mirror to mirrored the diamond over. So we have the reflection center and reflection angle, which is for this example, just going to change the reflection angle. So we're going to click toggle animation. So now this is the starting position. So what we can do is we can actually change the starting position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it so that there's nothing on the screen. So that's our starting position. Then I'm going to drag it down. And then what I want to do is I want to reveal the second diamond. So I want it to reveal and I want it to stop right there. So let, let me click play real quick. So as you can see, it came, then it revealed the diamond, then it stopped. So then what I can do is I'm going to add another keyframe right here because again, you can change this over time. I'm going to have it close up again right there. And then I'm going to move it and then I'm going to go one more time. I'm going to go in this direction. I'm going to have it come all the way back and close. So now let's play that real quick. There, that's the second keyframe. That's the third keyframe. That's the fourth keyframe because they're all closed up. But if you look in between, this is changing over time. Then again, it's continuing its path. It's changing over time. And then it goes back again, changing over time. So if you watch, is actually too fast. So what you can do is drag it out again to change how long you want it to go. You just space it out more. Those are five different ways to change keyframes. The first one was to adjust the position. The second was to scale it. The third was to rotate. The fourth was the opacity. And the last one was to change an effect over time. And all of these can actually be applied at the same time. So right now we have the mirror on. So let's go back to opacity. So let's change the opacity over time. So let's give the starting position as 100%. And then at the end, we want it to be zero. So now it's actually, as you can see, the mirror is changing over time. And then it's fading out over time. Or you could reverse this instead of it being 100, you could be starting position, let it be zero. Jump to the next one. Let's make this 100. See in the window down here, it's flipped. All right, so that's changing the opacity. So now we have the mirror keyframe and we have the opacity keyframe. Both of them are running at the same time. So now let's go back to motion. So now let's change the rotation. So we have our starting position at zero. So now we want it to rotate as well. We're going to have it actually rotate. We have the effect and the opacity and rotation. All of those keyframes going at the same time. Let's also look at the scale. So I want it to, for scale to move at the same time as rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start the scale at zero. And then I'm going to move or toggle over to the next one. So I'm going to click that rotation because this is where rotation is. I want it to be aligned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to scale. I'm going to set the scale at 100. Now what you'll see is it's scaling up, fading in, and then it also has the mirror effect going over time. So we have all those different keyframes going over. Last one we're going to change is we're going to change the position. It's, you can either start at the beginning point, you can start the end point of where you want to put your keyframes at. Uh, in this example, I've been going from the beginning to the end, but you probably find it a lot easier to start at the end point because most people know where they want it to end. And usually ending will be at 100%, the scale being at 100%, everything kind of at normal, and then 
they'll use a keyframe to transfer it or move it over. So you may find it a lot easier. For this one, I started at the beginning just to show you what it looks like. But for this last one, I actually start at the end. So this is, or let me say right when I have these two. Because as you notice, the triangle is actually out of position or not really in the frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, this is the end position. What I'm going to see is if I can actually, what I want to do is let me, the position's here, but let me go back to mirror. So I'm actually going to adjust the, rot the reflection angle. Then in motion, what I'm going to do is this is where it's on screen and it, and it ends right there. So I'm going to move this keyframe, the position down. So then what I'm going to do is I want this to fly across the screen. So I'm going to take the start position down here and this is the end position. So this line represents the position. So that's the start, that's the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this across the screen. It actually looks like almost dice rolling across the screen. But let me play this. I have all five of these changing over time. Position, scale, there's a beginning, there's an end. Only using two keyframes for each of these up here. Then I have the rotation. Then I have going to opacity. I have that changing over time as you can see it over here. Then I also have the mirror changing over time. But that is what keyframes allows you to do. And that's why it's such a powerful tool once you understand it. Wanted to show different examples of how you can apply just in this simple context with just the object on the screen. You could do, this could be a video, it could be text that you could have flying over. You're rotating it, scaling it up, fading it in, fading it out. Those are just five different ways you can use keyframes and then think of just the different ways that you can combine different objects, different videos, different pictures together. You can have an object fade in and rotate. You can have an object fade out and rotate, scale in, change its position over the screen or have it move up and down. So there's a lot of different ways to use keyframes. If you're new to my channel, though, it's focused on travel experiences and fun. One of the experiences I share on my channel is my experience editing and creating videos for YouTube. I specifically use the software Adobe Premiere Elements for all my video editing. Please know I'm not an expert on Adobe Premiere Elements. I just want to share what I learned to help other people who want to use the software to make some pretty cool videos. I struggled early on to use keyframes, but now I found out how to do some cool transitions and to move some objects. If you want to learn that, plus some more, then I recommend you hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you never miss a video. I've really got some cool tricks stored up for my next couple of videos. On the screen, check out my Adobe Premiere Elements playlist. If you're trying to grow your YouTube channel, I recommend you check out TubeBuddy. In the description below is an affiliate link. And don't be afraid to check out my next video. My name is Ish, and I challenge you to go out there and have a new experience today.